Sega Drunk. Hello, this channel has been around about seven years so far, and I have a whopping one video on a Sega CD game, that being Popful Mail. But let's change that and take a look at some of the best Sega CD or Mega CD games out there. I'm not gonna lie, one reason I stayed away from Sega CD is because I thought most of the catalog was just filled with crappy full motion video games like Sewer Shark or Fahrenheit or Night Trap. But there's plenty of really good stuff to be found here, and I'm just gonna give a quick overview of a few standout games you might have missed at the time they were released. Like maybe you were busy with Super Nintendo at the time, like some other guy I know whose name rhymes with Mess Bunk. We gotta start with the obvious first, and that's Sonic CD. This one may look and sound like a typical Sonic game at first, but certain control mechanics are different, like having two different dashes you have to charge, and, you know, being able to travel through time. That's right, you trigger a sign that'll say past or future, then gather as much speed as possible to travel in that direction in time. What's cool is that what you do in the past does reflect how the game plays out, including what ending you eventually receive. Really, it boils down to finding an enemy generator in each level, but that's a lot easier said than done because every zone is freaking gigantic. Sonic CD kind of reminds me of Yoshi's Island for Super Nintendo and that it feels like a typical platformer on steroids. There's tons of different ways to approach this game. There's multiple paths to get the best ending. You can go for speed or 100% or just hang out and explore. Any way you approach it, it's well worth playing today. And even better is that it's been remade for PC, 360, and Xbox One. So check it out that way if you can. I gotta make sure I mention one of my favorite series ever, Final Fight, and Final Fight CD, which is one of the best home console arcade ports ever. You got all three playable characters, you got two-player co-op, plus you got different game modes like a gauntlet. And yeah, some of the game remains censored, and to be honest, I never really liked the Sega CD soundtrack all that much, but damned if this one still isn't fun to play today. This version remains one of the best beat-em-ups ever, and it's a must-have if you own a Sega CD. Now, if you just want to cut to the chase and skip everything and get to what the best game on Sega CD is, then my pick would be Snatcher. Holy crap, this game is incredible. It's made by Hideo Kojima, and yeah, I know that name can spur a lot of sardonic comments, sometimes from me, but this game is just really friggin' cool. It's essentially a point-and-click adventure game at its core, with a few other gameplay elements thrown in, but this is really a story-driven game through and through. This ain't no watered-down, censored-by-Nintendo-of-America-type story either, as you can clearly see. Okay, so it takes after Blade Runner a little too closely, both visually and with the story, but hey, Blade Runner is one of my favorite movies ever, so this game works just fine for me. If I had to pick one game on this list to be the absolute best, it would be Snatcher. Do you like games like Star Fox? Then you'll love Soul Star, a rail shooter that has you zooming across space and skimming the surface of planets. Your ship can transform between three different forms, with all sorts of power-ups available, and spectacular graphics and music, and some really cool sprite scaling. There's even a two-player co-op mode where player one controls the ship and player two shoots everything that moves. This one is a must-play on the Sega CD, and it's a shame that it never got an official sequel. You can find a ROM of the cancelled sequel for 32X titled Soul Star X, but it doesn't touch the arcade-like performance and sound of the Sega CD edition. If you dig games like this, like I do, then there's also Silpied. It pulls off some technical trickery to make the gameplay look like real-time 3D rendering, which is pretty cool. This game plays really fast, which makes it tough, but damned if this one isn't rewarding as hell to play through. Yeah, the backgrounds and settings aren't all that diverse. You're pretty much in space the entire time with only a couple of exceptions, and even then the backgrounds run very choppily. But besides that, this game is an awesome time and absolutely worth checking out. If you prefer regular old shoot 'em ups then you're not going to find any better than KO Flying Squadron. This one has a bit of a parodious vibe. Well, I only say that because that's my main frame of reference for horizontal shoot 'em ups with insane cartoony visuals like this one. But if you dig games like that, or other stuff like the Cotton series, then you'll dig this one as well. The soundtrack is appropriately bright and cheerful, and the difficulty is challenging without being R-type levels of insanity. Sadly, the price of this one is complete insanity, so this is one you gotta play any way you can. Android Assault The Revenge of Bari Arm is another fun one. It's developed by one of my personal favorite developers, Human Entertainment, and they always made interesting stuff. You can find four weapons that can be powered up three times, with the third power-up turning your ship into a mech with four different speeds you can switch between. And you use this to navigate some huge levels. To do a charge shot in this game, you have to stay off of the fire button. The weapon only charges itself, giving this one kind of a different spin on the shoot-em-up genre that you may be used to. 
And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Lords of Thunder. This game is the total package. Incredible visuals, smooth, consistent gameplay, a really tough challenge without being unfair, and a kick-ass soundtrack to carry you through the experience. We could argue till we're blue in the face about which version is better, this one or the PC Engine CD edition, but any way you play this one is well worth your time. As usual with Sega and shoot 'em ups there are tons available like Robo Alest and Soul Feast. I just didn't want this list to be dominated by one genre, but if you're into games like this, there's plenty of quality titles to choose from. If you prefer run-and-gun games, then there's the Terminator, and what a surprise this game is, considering both the Super Nintendo and Genesis Terminator games were letdowns. This game is totally different, and it's pretty much exactly what anyone would want in a Terminator game based on the first movie. You play as Kyle Reese in a Contra-style run-and-gun and, and shoot-everything-that-moves game, with the visuals and music capturing that Terminator vibe perfectly, with the music being done by a name you might recognize in Tommy Tallarico. Man, why couldn't the Super Nintendo gotten this game? Speaking of licensed games, there's also Batman Returns, but there's a catch with this one. It's divided into two different games, an action platformer, which is, eh, it's okay at best, and the driving game, where you fly down the road in the Batmobile through five levels set to a time limit as you blast everything on screen. Gee, which one should I pick? But yeah, you can select the driving game right there at the main menu, and what you see here is what you get. It's so much fun to play through. Here's a completely different kind of driving game, Road Blaster FX. This is a port of an arcade game, but man, they did a heck of a job with this one, especially the visuals. Yeah, they're a bit bleary, and the frame rate isn't the greatest, but I mean, jeez, come on, look at this game. It's like an interactive Saturday morning cartoon, it's crazy, and it's pretty fun to play, too. If you want a cartoony styled game with a little more action, then you might want to try out Cobra Command. Again, the frame rate here isn't the greatest, but this game is definitely unique among its peers. It's essentially a gallery shooter where you control the crosshair and shoot targets as they appear. And to be honest, this game is pretty dang limited, but it's neat to look at and it sounds freaking great. Battlecore is a little more hands-on when it comes to the combat. Again, we have a first-person perspective, but this time you play as a mech with all sorts of weapons like missiles, guns, and flamethrowers. I really dig this game because while it's pretty simple on the surface, you just walk around and make stuff go boom, the art design here is done in a way that makes it look much different than most other games. I also love the ominous background noises. They really help give this game a sense of dread. Definitely check this game out. It's one of the best for Sega CD. Let's talk some RPGs on the Sega CD with the Lunar series, Silver Star and Eternal Blue. Both of these games got complete editions, so to speak, on other platforms, but they're definitely still worthwhile in their original forms. And while the random battles and combat system are about what you'd expect in any turn-based RPG, where these games really shine is in the story, the presentation, and the music. These cutscenes look freaking incredible, and the soundtrack really adds a lot to the immersion. And hey, the story holds up its end of the bargain too, even if the pacing gets kinda wonky here and there since you do have to grind a bit in both games, but still, if you're into RPGs, you'll love both Lunar games, even in their original incarnations. Next we got Popful Mail, and although this isn't a role-playing game by strict definitions, it's a quality adventure title with all sorts of weapons and armor to pick up while slaying tons of enemies on a side-scrolling action platformer. No leveling system here, instead you're grinding to collect money to get better gear. There's two other playable characters you can switch between as you progress through the game, which goes a long way in making this one a quality playthrough. Okay, you know me, and you know I love weird stuff, and Panic for Sega CD might be one of the weirdest I've ever played. A computer virus has made all the machines in the world go crazy, so you play as this kid and go around returning things to normal by solving these simple puzzles. It's a lot harder than it sounds, and it's a lot weirder than it sounds too. There's a lot of slapstick humor here, and yeah, this game isn't for everyone, but I got a kick out of it. Speaking of weird, there's also Heart of the Alien, otherwise known as the sequel to Another World, which is otherwise known as Out of This World. The Sega CD edition comes with both games, and they both have an intensely strange vibe that's consistent through both. It's one of those love it or hate it kind of playthroughs. Without giving anything away, all I can say is that if you dig Out of This World, you'll dig Heart of the Alien. 
Back to a little more traditional stuff, there's also Dark Wizard, a turn-based tactical RPG where the combat takes place on a hexagonal grid and you get four playable characters to choose from, each with their own attributes and all that good stuff. This is a story-driven strategy game with some really standout music. I mean, I know it's Sega CD and all these games have great music, but this one really stood out as something unique here. This game is a bit slow-paced and it's a long playthrough, but if you dig tactical RPGs then you'll dig Dark Wizard. Finally, I gotta mention Shining Force CD. What, did you think I would forget this one? This game is actually a remake combining both Shining Force Gaiden 1 and 2 for Game Gear while packing in a bunch of additional content. Visually, it's just like the Shining Force games on Genesis, and I'm not sure there's many out there that are gonna argue that Shining Force CD is better than, or even just as good as Shining Force 1, 2, or 3. For one thing, the villages in this one are lacking, to say the least, which is kind of a disappointment, but hey, if you dig those games, then you're gonna dig Shining Force CD. It's just, you know, more Shining Force. You can't argue with that. Alright, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.